it was a confluence of my love for art and my love for um, politics and my love for sports and yeah and I think it's all I think football is a perfect storm. My name is Kelly Nascimento De Luca. Um, I am 51. I was born in 1967 in Santos, Brazil. Uh, it's this, it's a small island with the largest port in South America. It's in the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, what led me to create this uh, project that I'm doing with women's football or soccer is uh, was a whole bunch of different uh, uh, things that happened at the same time. Um, I've always been interested in, in gender equality, as, especially as it pertains to uh, conflict resolution and world peace. And uh, I went to the United Nations School. I've always been really interested in um, foreign policy, believe it or not, and stuff like that. And I'm also a photographer, so I mean, I went into uh, into uh, the arts. But I, uh, through a, just a bizarre coincidence, my brother-in-law is a coach. He's Brazilian, but he's a coach here in New York, and. He had been telling me forever about this young girl from Brazil. Her name is Laís Araújo, and she's a player. And she was at the time she was like 14, and she lived in Salvador. And he's like, Kelly, next time you go, you have to see her. This girl is amazing. He knew her because he used to take trips of young players with their parents from here to, to meet teams in Brazil and like scrimmage and learn how the teams work and look at you know. And he'd seen her because he was he would always schedule. Um, some of these meetings in favela teams because favelas have a whole structure of you know for football they have like their own teams their own federation you know their own sort of uh, leagues and everything and he met this girl just playing with boys and uh you know on the on the streets and uh he would see her every year and he just kept telling me how great she was well long story short she eventually came to new york and she attended a junior college and um she was the star, uh, and this is like three years ago, this happened, or three or four years ago. She was the star, and she, got, she made all the papers, and she got a full ride to University of Florida for the last two years. And then she, through Facebook and through her connections, she found the coach of the national team, the U20 national team, women's national team in Brazil. They brought her to train. Uh, based on some video she'd made when she was here of herself and she ended up being their number 10 shirt captain during the World Cup, the U20 World Cup. And I found that world and that literally breeds talent in soccer that this girl would have to go through all of that to be seen by a national team. And uh, it just, I just thought this, this, gotta be, this story has to be told and my idea was to tell her story, just artistically. And then I started researching um, the history of women's soccer. And uh, it, for about two years, I you know just researched and met people, and I found a couple of things that made this something that I had to do. But most importantly, it was this, and I'm sure other people know this, but I found that the connection between the state of how women are treated in football by their federations and by their country, in each individual country, directly mirrors the state of how women are treated in that country. The issues that, that they face, the specific issues that they face in sports are the same issues inherently in the country with women. And this in turn mirrors the economic health of that country and the stability of that country. So I thought, wow, right? I mean, it seems obvious now that I say it out loud, but soccer is the game that's played all around the world and it's in fact a mirror, right? It's really a mirror that reflects everything. Uh, and, it, and it all comes from women, right? It all derives from how women are treated. And so I, I would say that you know, football or soccer and women are a barometer for how the world is doing. Because you, know, you get to a point where there is no moving forward unless women are brought to the table, unless women are educated, unless women have a say, unless women are helping to formulate foreign policy. And so I guess it was a confluence of my love for art and my love for um, politics and my love for sports and yeah and I think it's all I think football's the perfect storm I guess it was a confluence of my love for art and my love for um, politics and my love for sports and yeah and I think it's all I think football's the perfect storm so what I decided to do was a film about Laís that tells her story and within her story 
we tell the story, a little bit of the history of women's football, and a little bit of the history of, of what's going on now in women's football, and what the future looks like. And in that, I think you learn a lot about the world, and a lot about these incredible countries that you know we don't always get to go to, and all through sport. But really, I think visually, I just want it to be a love letter to the, to the female athlete, right? And the, the incredible amount of passion, and um, determination, and love that they have for this game, even at least at this moment, with no other outcome than in the future than the possibility of playing because they don't make money like the men so they really do it for the love and that's pretty cool and that's it so I'm, I'm one of my favorite things about doing this and what about everything that I do is that I'm constantly learning constantly every day I learn something that I, I, I did not know truly did not know um, and I think the one of the most inspiring things that I'm learning is that there's so many people out there. So it's such a huge community, and everyone seems to know each other. The more you meet people, they, they know people you met. You know, there there are women in Australia and and men, but you know, so so many women all over the world who have <clears throat> been working to forward this game and to and to help women. And the game is being used for so many different things that you know it's been used in Brazil by some amazing organizations and amazing women to help get girls out of dangerous situations to help engage girls into some sort of uh, exercise and, and, and in doing that also give them a sense of community give them a sense of uh, you know a, a feeling of trust giving them a safe place to go every day and um, and then there's also the other aspect which is with you find talent and people who for whom this has becomes a really what they love right um, and I think it's really important to tell these stories. I think it's important to tell these stories because for many reasons, but also because a lot of these women are activists. And one of the things about activists is that it's a very lonely thing, you know? And now with the internet and, and you know, social media, it's definitely becoming a smaller world. But I think connecting, you know, telling these stories makes a lot of people who've been doing this for such a long time um, on their own not feel alone. Um, you know, to see the people, you know, to, to be able to see some a young girl in, in in Zanzibar, right, who desperately wants to play and is playing, you know, um, in full burqa, you know, we'll see a, a, a maybe dissimilar but equally pervasive struggle of a young girl in Armenia. And I think that that's really important. I think it helps, you know, it helps give you a little lift and it helps you give you a little sort of more uh, sense to your to your struggle, you know, to know that you're not alone. I also think that this is kind of important too. I think that um, you move people with stories, and there's a lot of a, a, one of the things that are, is very pervasive in women's football. I feel is apathy, because it's a it's a man's game, and for the, the majority of the people who make decisions in all these places are still men. And I think there's a huge element of like brushing it off, like you know what? Okay, fine, you're playing your game, and that'll stop bothering us. But I think that when you see somebody's story, it's hard to ignore it. It's hard. It's easier to read numbers or read about, you know, women's soccer and read story. But when you see someone telling their story, when you see these women training, and they're badass. Some of these women are amazing. And you know, I, one of my favorite stories is when we get new, we get crew in every country. We will sort of go just the four of us, you know, my DP, my co-director, and a producer, and we'll hire. And we'll sometimes like in Italy, we had these this very much older man. He's almost seventy. He was our sound guy, and he was awesome. His name was Maurizio. We took him to Juventus to see the women, the women um, train, and he was not even a football fan to begin with. But he, by the end of the day, he was like, oh, like he could not believe how tough they were and how skilled they were and how you know people just don't think about it. And I think that that's that's hopefully that's one of the things that'll do. It'll show people the the talent and the determination 